Hey everybody, I'm David with Umarex, and I'm here today to talk about something that I'm very excited about. This is the DL44 Blastech Blaster. Now it started its life as an Umarex M712, but as you can see, it has been highly modified. Chris Turek, the up north air gunner, did some serious modifications to this gun, and for a good purpose. This piece right here, the one I'm holding in my hand, is one of a kind, and it will be auctioned to benefit the Student Air Rifle Program. Now, those of you who know the Student Air Rifle Program, it is a crucial way that we in this industry are teaching kids about the responsibility and the discipline needed to handle firearms safely. It's a very worthwhile cause. The auction is going to be going on on Gun Broker, and it will be going during the week of the May the 4th celebrations that surround everything in the Star Wars universe. So, may the 4th be with you. Check out the auction at gunbroker.com. Bid, because this is a one-of-a-kind piece, and it's not going to last long. Okay, let me tell you a little bit about this specific build. If you take a look here at the table, what we have is an original M712. Those of you who are familiar with the Umarex BB gun know that this is a riot to shoot. It's a fully automatic version of the iconic C96 broom-handled Mauser. This replica piece right here from Umarex is ridiculously fun. It's also magazine-fed. So, those of you who know the DL44, you know it doesn't take a magazine. Most broom-handled Mausers didn't. They fed from the top, and they were capped right here, so they didn't need that extra extension. And that's what the prop was built off of. But this gun, in order to house the CO2 and the BBs for the fully automatic firing function of the BB gun, has that extended magazine. This is a fun gun, and it's the base for what you'll see in the DL44. To begin with, you have to chop the barrel, you have to add on the scope, you need a flash hider, and you need some what are called greeblies. Greeblies are the industrial light and magic term for the add-ons that you place on a typical prop. Because what they did is they went into prop houses. In this case, in the, in the mid-1970s, they were at a place called Bapti & Co. in London. Bapti & Co. has been around for 100 years now. They've been collecting weapons after every war they're a big armorer. They have these massive stockpiles of all kinds of ridiculous weapons, and they're real weapons that they are using as props in worldwide uh, sort of film and television, and even in some stage productions. So when the Lucas team went over there to do their filming at Elstree Studios, they found a broom-handled Mauser that had been in numerous movies before. That Mauser had a bull barrel. It had an extension on the end for a silencer. It was a very different beast. But they added on the Greeblies, which are the little pieces that make it look just unfamiliar enough to where people didn't think, hey, why is Han Solo carrying a C96? So let's take a look at the modifications that were made to this specific gun to get it to look like the DL44. To start with, there is the iconic flash hider. Now, for those of you who are collectors, this is probably the single most expensive flash hider you can buy in the entire world. It came off of an MG81 machine gun. Most of those were shortly after uh, World War I period. They were junk. They were hanging around in, in you know, people's basements and other places like that. Nowadays, you cannot find one. It's rumored that only one or two of, ever, of the originals have ever made it into the hands of legitimate Star Wars collectors who were trying to put together these props. So there's an aftermarket reproduction version of this that a lot of people make. Some mill them out of aluminum, some make them out of steel. This add-on right here closely mirrors exactly what was on the original prop that they used during the shoot at Elstree in London. So there are other details here. A lot of the designers of these props practice what they call kit bashing. And kit bashing is you go into other model shops or other model collections, model kits, even taking apart small engines. You pull things from where they're meant to be and you place them where they're not. In this case, these fins originally came off of a model aircraft engine, and since then all manner of different pieces have been used. These are the cooling fins that keep the mythical DL44 from overheating. Um, there are two very small antenna up on top and a strip that came out of a, a calculator uh, keypad. The scope itself is a German scope from World War II, the three power scope. Um, this is, is one of the things they refer to as the mystery dial. Uh, not sure exactly what it does since it's a fixed scope, fixed power scope. The scope mount itself was added on by Bapti & Co. The armorer there did a lot of the modifications to that early piece. So this is what's known as the hero prop. You can see different versions of it. 
This one here is a master replica version. This is the one that was licensed by ILM and Lucasfilm shortly after the 2000 mark when they started to actually let people into the vault to see and to get the measurements off the originals. This is the one that came out. You'll notice this version here, the master's prop, totally brand new, no weathering. This was supposed to be what a DL44 Blast Tech Blaster looked like the day it came from the factory. It's pristine. They call this the Elite Edition. And you, if you take a look at what's recreated here, every one of the details is spot on all the way down. This one, though, looks a lot more like the one that was used in the movies because it was carried, beat up. The good thing about this one, though, is it still functions. If you'll notice, it has a plate in the bottom that is more of just a placeholder for that magazine. But if you want to take your DL44 out and shoot it, you can insert the magazine, it comes with the gun, and now this, this messes with the visual effect a little bit, but now this DL44 is a fully functioning BB gun that'll be just as fun to, to shoot as the M712. The plate, though, completes the appearance and makes it look just like it should for the original. Now, this prop for the movie was never intended to be what it has become. A lot of the times when they built these props, they simply took a familiar object and they glued on these random pieces or these greeblies in an attempt to, to get something that on film in the 1970s would confuse the audience into thinking it was something new. So Star Wars works off of what they refer to as the used future concept. Everything looks beat up in those first three films. So this gun is the one that they used while they were over in England. When they came back over and refilmed some of the, uh, the scenes, like the cantina scene where Han Solo kills Greedo, uh, that one was filmed in California and they could not import the same props because the gun that was used over at Elstree Studios was not able to be imported into the United States conveniently enough for them to use it. So they rebuilt it. So those of you film geeks out there who are really studying the tape, what you will notice is that Han Solo's Greedo Killer Blaster is a little bit different. Instead of having this cone on the top, it has the cone off of an M3 grease gun. It looks slightly different because it is different. It was built off of a different frame. It has different greeblies attached to it. And the, the filmmakers hoped that he would pull it out, shoot it quickly enough that no one would notice. But as we know, three decades, four decades worth of, of film geeks, people like me who, who just study this with a fine tooth comb, we know the differences and we know how, how to tell the difference between the hero version and the Greedo killer. Um, another thing you'll notice is that the mythology supports the, the DL-44 in the same way that many of us think about the 1911 today. Even though there is one maker that we associate with Han Solo's piece, the Blast Tech Blaster, there are numerous makers of the DL-44s in the Star Wars universe. Many of the Imperial officers that are carrying guns in that first film are carrying Marisan blasters. They have a very different look to them here, and they have a digital scope rather than the actual visual scope that's off there. It's a little bit of a nerd extra for you. This, though, is the real deal. It's Han Solo's hero gun. Every detail down to the weathering, the way in which the fins on the front are done, even the, uh, this side with the dial on the back, it's all picture perfect. Take a look at it. The auction is running on gunbroker.com. This is a fantastic piece. It's one of a kind. Every detail, I, I, I can't stress this enough, down to the imprint of the name of the German manufacturer that built the scope that appeared on the one that they used over on the shoot in England. It's right there. It's been re-stamped into the barrel of this piece. Everything you want from it is here. All the parts work and function. Benefits a good cause. Student Air Rifle Program, brought to you from Umarex, available on Gunbroker. Check out the auction now, and may the 4th be with you.